Okay, uh, in the last two videos, we added Elasticsearch to our project, then we set up our Elasticsearch index, and now we're ready to build the cloud function that's going to move the data from, or make a copy of our data from Firebase to our Elasticsearch server so that we can query it. Um, so to get started, let's uh, head over to the Firebase documentation because that's actually usually the best place to get started. So here we are at the getting started section for Firebase uh, cloud functions. I'm just ha I just have uh, getting started selected down here. And so if you were going to deploy a cloud function or you had an idea for a cloud function, this would be where you would want to start. So setting up the initial Firebase SDK for cloud functions is the heading where we would start. Uh, so let's see, I guess to, to start off, we need to install the Firebase tools. And in order to install the tools, we need to install Node.js onto your computer. So to get started, that's what you need to do. And as you can see right here, it says, which you can install the following instructions on nodejs.org. So that's, that's definitely the first place you want to do, and then install Node.js onto your computer, and then you can come back to this video. Okay, so after you have Node.js installed, uh, you want to navigate to wherever your project is stored on your computer. So in my case, I have it in F, Android Studio Projects, and then the app is called For Sale. And what we want to do is open up a command window here. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift on Windows, and right click and go to open command window here and I guess I can leave this open and so now we have a command window opened and so we just want to follow the instructions so the first line is copy npm install g firebase tools so let's do that I'm just gonna paste it in let it do its thing it might take a little bit it shouldn't take too long okay once that's installed let's take a look and see what's next so we need to Install the tools, yep. And now we need to actually log into our project. Let's see. So I don't see where it tells me actually what to do. I mean, I know what to do. So you're supposed to go Firebase login, and this will log you into your Firebase account. But since I'm already logged in to my console in my browser, it's it's detecting that and it's saying, okay, um, it's already you're already logged in. So now we want to basically configure our project to enable uh, Firebase functions into it. And I don't see the instructions. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm trying to point out in the documentation so that you can do it yourself. Uh, it's, prob it's probably in one of these other categories, but we want to go Firebase init, init functions. And this is going to initialize, this is going to enable functions in your project. And I just hit Y for yes down there and now it's going to ask me for what project I want to configure functions for. I'm going to say, so I'm going to search in all my Firebase projects and this is the one right here. So I click on it and do I want to install some dependencies? Yep. And now it's going to install a bunch of stuff. I just want to mention this might take a bit of time. I'm obviously pausing the video while it installs on my computer. So uh, just be patient if it's taking a little bit of time. Okay, so that's all done. So now if we were to open up our directory here, so we have our for sale application, this new folder called functions has now been created. And also this Firebase uh, file right here and this Firebase config file here. So let's go into functions and this is where, this is the functions folder where all of your cloud functions will be hosted. So if you open up this index, this is where we can start defining functions. So if I open up, well it's too big. If I open up notepad with that function, I gotta fit this to the window. Uh, so this this is the index file that your function is gonna run by, and you code it in Node Node.js. That's why we had to install Node.js onto our system. So kind of uh, just as an overview, if you're confused, basically what this is is we create a function that would normally be hosted on a server, and then we deploy it from our computer, and it and it launches to the Firebase console, to your Firebase console, and then that function sits there, and it's constantly running on your Firebase server. So that's that's what we're trying to do right here. So before we actually write it, though, we need to install one more dependency, and that is going to be it's to help us make HTTP HTTP requests to our server. So we got to do uh, npm's because we're installing a Node module, and we want to do save and one of the modules is named request and another one is named request promise. So we want to install those two things. And if you if we look at the documentation in some of the Firebase examples, so if I was to go to 
here, the Firebase CLI reference. And if I was to go, I was to here, yo, here's what I was looking for. You have Firebase login, uh, install, and then Firebase init, all that stuff. But we actually have some examples. So if I scroll down and go to here, I guess, I think it's environment configuration. If we scroll down, we actually see some examples. So accessing the environment configuration, you can see in one of the examples, it uses this, this request promise library. And so this is kind of one thing that I don't really like about the Firebase documentation, because here and there they reference things that they don't really explain. Like here they're, they're using a Node.js module that they didn't specify that they installed. And that was the module that I just installed right there. Uh, looks like we had a problem. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. So to install the module, you actually have to go into the functions folder. So CD functions. And now that we're in the functions folder, now we can install. So I just hit the up arrow there, npm install, same as last time, hit enter, and that should install it. Um, but anyway, so yeah, they, they use this, this module, this uh, Node.js module request dash promise, but they don't specify that they actually installed it. So I definitely think that could be confusing for a lot of people. I think that cloud functions is kind of confusing coming in with no knowledge in the first place. So yeah, just kind of a thing I don't like about that. But anyway, installing this will take care of that uh, module. Because this is basically the same format as we're gonna use to send a request to our Elasticsearch server. We're gonna return a request, we're gonna put our Elasticsearch URL, we're gonna attach some headers, and then attach the body, which is gonna be the data that we're sending to the server. It's gonna be very, very similar to this example right here actually. And so now that it's done, we can open up our functions. Oh, actually, we need to do one more thing. Uh, we need to specify the configuration for our Elasticsearch server so that our Firebase function can communicate with the Elasticsearch server. And that's why I actually referenced this piece of documentation right here, because if we looked at the CLI reference, this is what we're going to do. Cloud functions commands, we're actually setting a configuration. So we're storing runtime configuration values for the current project's cloud functions. And so to do that, where was I here? Um, we need to, this is basically kind of how it goes. We have Firebase functions, config set, and then some service dot key, and then you put your API key, some service dot ID and the client ID. But in our case, we're gonna do um, Elasticsearch dot username and Elasticsearch dot password, because that's what we need to communicate with our Elasticsearch server. Those are the two authorization, uh, I guess, parameters that we need to communicate. So we're going to type that in here, but make sure you, I think you have the CD to the previous folder so that you're not inside the functions folder. And so what we want to type is uh, Firebase functions and then config set. So I'm just copying exactly what it showed here, basically. I could just copy this actually. So if I delete all this, let's go paste. And then so what we want to do is config set and we want to change this keyword to elastic search. So elastic search, and then change the key, one of the keys to username, and then my username and also your username for your elastic search server is just gonna be user. And then we wanna do the same thing for the password. So elastic search dot password, and then we wanna change it to whatever your password is. So I'll just stick mine in there. And once again, I'm, I'm blanking this out, so obviously you can't see it, but I'm just copying the field that was right there and I'm putting it in here. So that will set the configuration for this uh, function so that we can actually communicate with the server. And I believe we're going to set the URL also. Let me just see. I'm pretty sure we have to do the URL. So uh, one more parameter, so just kind of do a space. And then once again, elastic search dot URL. And then we just want to do equals whatever our elastic search URL is. So this guy right here. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in there and then close the quotations and that's it. So this is going to be exactly what you have, except obviously the password and the elastic search server IP will be different and then just hit enter. So we get the, the response functions config updated. So that's good. That means our configuration file has been updated successfully. Now all of the kind of housekeeping stuff is done. Uh, now we're ready to actually build our function. So this video is actually sort of long. Um, I wonder if uh, this is pr I could stop here 
and then and then in the next one we'll build the function because I mean that's going to take probably at least 10 minutes I think to build the function and then deploy it so maybe I will stop the video here um, we have everything we need and now in the next one we'll build our function and deploy it to our Firebase server so I'll see you guys in that next video